Here's an interesting question, which tests your knowledge of project management. Team is trying to decide how to complete tasks faster. All tasks take the same time to complete, and five team members can complete 10 tasks in 15 days. Currently, team is brainstorming on how to complete the work faster by adding additional team members to the team. How many days will it take for 15 people to complete five tasks on the checklist if each task can only be completed by the person who started it and cannot be delegated? You have four different choices. Choice A, less than one day. Choice B, between one and three days. Choice C, between four and six days. And choice D, more than seven days. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 15 seconds, to see if you can calculate it. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and share with you my version of the solution. But as usual, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post your solution in comments. Here's the trick. If five people can complete 10 tasks in 15 days, one person can complete 10 divided by 5, which is 2 tasks in 15 days. Since tasks are the same length, one person can complete one task in 7.5 days, which is calculated as 15 divided by 2, which equals 7.5 days per task. Since tasks are not interchangeable, only 5 people out of 15 will be able to contribute to completion of 5 tasks and it will take 7.5 days for 5 people to complete 5 tasks and productivity will not improve by adding more people. So the correct choice here is choice D. It will take more than 7 days to complete these 5 tasks. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is a very cool question which is frequently used to test your math skills. You need to determine how much interest should be paid. Sheila borrows $36,000 to purchase a vehicle at the rate of 6% and repays by making fixed payments monthly in the amount of $845.46. At the end of four years, how much interest Sheila will end up paying along with the principal amount. You have four different choices. Choice A, $2,160. Choice B, $4,320. Choice C, $4,582.13. And choice D, $5,082.17. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. Maybe pause this video to see if you can calculate the answer. Did you figure it out? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. To solve this challenge, let's first look at the facts. Principal amount borrowed here is $36,000. Time to repay is 4 years, which equals 48 months, which means that number of payments is equal to 48. Monthly payment amount is $845.46. Based on this information, let's look at how can we solve this challenge. And the first step is to calculate the total repayment amount, which would include principal and interest. And we will do it by multiplying fixed monthly payment by the number of payments. 845.46 multiplied by 48 equals $40,582.13. Because we know the principal amount, which is $36,000, we can calculate total interest paid by subtracting $36,000, which is principal, from the total repayment amount which means that $40,582.13 minus $36,000 equals $4,582.13, which is total interest to be repaid. 
so the correct choice here is answer C, $4,582.13. Do you know the better way to solve it? Please make sure you post your solution by sharing it in comments. Here's an interesting question where answer might be very surprising to you. You need to determine the day of the week. If January 1st, 1996 was Monday, what day of the week was January 1st, 1997? And obviously, you need to determine it without looking at the calendar. There are four possible answers to this question. Choice A – Thursday Choice B – Friday Choice C – Wednesday and Choice D – Sunday Do you know what the answer might be? Believe it or not, the answer can be calculated doing mental math. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 15 seconds, to see if you can come up with the solution. Regardless if you're ready or not, I am going to move forward and share my solution with you. And obviously, if you know a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. As you might have figured out, the year 1996 can be divided by 4, so it is a leap year, with additional February 29s being added to this year. A regular year has 365 days. Leap year, by definition, includes February 29s and has a total of 365 plus 1, total of 366 days. There are 52 7-day weeks in a year plus some extra days, which would drive the difference from January 1st of 1996, which is Monday. We can calculate it by dividing 366 by 7, which equals 52.28 weeks. Let's find the total number of days in 52 full weeks. We can do it by multiplying 52 by 7, which would be equal 364. As you might have figured out, two extra days have been added into the week in 1996, which can be calculated by subtracting 364 from 366. So the solution would be, since the first day of 1996 was Monday, so the first day in 1997 must be two days after Monday. So the day is Wednesday. It is always good to verify the answer in Microsoft Excel. The day of the week for January 1st, 1996 can be calculated using the weekday formula. For weekday formula, we need to supply the day and then decide in the format. We will choose the first format, where the first day of the week is Sunday and the last day of the week is Saturday. The calculations show that the January 1st of 1996 is the second day of the week, which is Monday. Sunday is the first and Monday is the second day. Let's do the same calculation for January 1st of 1997. If I type the value of the day in the cell B3, I can just copy and paste the formula into the cell of C4. And as you can see, the difference is two days and January 1st of 1997 is the fourth day of the week, which is Wednesday. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Let's look at the very interesting question, which tests your math skills as well as your logical reasoning skills. You need to determine which speed should Anisha maintain. Usually when running, Anisha covers 8 miles in 15 minutes. Today, she covered 3 mile distance in 2 fifths of the regular time. What speed should she maintain for the remaining distance to cover it in the regular time? And you're presented with 4 different choices to choose from. Choice A – 8 miles per hour. Choice B – 10 miles per hour. Choice C – 15 miles per hour. And then choice D – 20 miles per hour. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. We only have two facts in this problem. Total distance 
equals 8 miles per hour. In regular time, Anisha covers this distance is 50 minutes. So, to get to the solution, we need to determine time to cover the distance of 3 miles. Let's first calculate how long it took for Anisha to cover the distance of 3 miles. We know that it took her two-fifths of the regular time. And regular time is 50 minutes. To calculate it, we need to multiply 50 minutes by two-fifths, which would be equal 20 minutes. So the remaining time for her to cover the remaining distance would be 50 minutes minus 20 minutes, which would be 30 minutes, which would be half an hour. Let's now calculate the remaining distance. Since she covered 3 miles and total distance is 8 miles, the remaining distance would be 8 miles minus 3 miles would be equal 5 miles. Ultimately, she would need to cover 5 miles in half an hour. To determine the speed that she need to go with, we need to divide 5 by 1.5 and, and 5 divided by 0 0.5 equals 10. So the correct solution is choice B, 10 miles per hour. Were you able to solve it on your own? Do you have an alternative solution? Please make sure to post your thoughts and feedback in comments. Here is the question for you to see how well you would do on the real test. You are presented with four triangles. Each triangle is of a different color and has numbers in the corners. You need to calculate the missing number. And you have four different choices. Choice A, 0. Choice B, 1. Choice C, 2. And choice D, 3. Give yourself a little bit of time and when you're ready with the answer, make sure to post it in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here is an interesting question where you present it with the set of numbers and you need to determine which number is not a prime number. You have four different choices. Choice A, 31. Choice B, 61. Choice C, 71. And choice D, 91. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe recall the definition of prime numbers and see if you can come up with the solution. Did you solve it? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. To solve this challenge, let's start with the definition of prime number. Prime numbers cannot be divided by any number other than one and number itself without leaving a remainder. Some examples of prime numbers would be 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and you can continue the chain. The opposite of prime numbers are composite numbers, and examples of those would be 4, could be divided by 2, 6, could be divided by 2 and 3, 8, which could be divided by 2 and 4, 9, 10, and you can continue the sequence. As you might have figured out, out of the numbers presented, 91 can be divisible by 7. So, 91 is not a prime number, which means that the correct solution is choice D, 91. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Would you like to try your own skills now to see how well you can solve the challenge? This is your opportunity to find the next number in the sequence. You are presented with three different numbers, 33, 55, 77 and one number is missing. You have four different choices to select the solution. Choice A, 97. Choice B, 99. Choice C, 105. And choice D, 107. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can solve this challenge. And once you're ready, make sure to post your answer in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. There is something fascinating about the questions where you need to count the number of squares. Let's look at the picture presented on the screen. How many squares can you count? You have four different choices. Do you see seven squares or eight squares or nine or 12 squares? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. I counted 7 squares, so my answer is choice A. Let me show them all to you. 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Do you have a different number? Please make sure to post your solution in comments. And if you need more questions like this, please make sure to check out description for additional resources. Here's an interesting question where I would like you to try your skills and post the answer in the comment section of this video. Which number has the lowest value? You have four different choices. Choice A, one third plus 0 0.4. Choice B, one plus 2.1. Choice C, 0 0.20 plus 0 0.31 and choice D 6 tenth. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video and once you're ready, please post your answer in the comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's an interesting question where you presented with the very unusual shape and you need to count how many squares are shown on this picture. You have four different choices. Choice A, 8, choice B 12, choice C 15, choice D 18. I'm gonna give you a quick hint. Please take a close look and you will see that some squares are inside of the other larger squares. Let me share with you my version of the solution and obviously if you count a different number, please make sure to share in comments. Believe it or not, but I counted 15 squares in this picture. Let me show them all to you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Did you count a different number? Do you have a better way to solve it? Do you have a system to solve these types of questions? Please make sure to share your thoughts and ideas in comments. Here is the question from the real test where you present it with the sequence of number and you need to identify the missing number. The numbers you see are 1, 5, 17, 65 and then comes the missing number and you have four different choices for the missing number. Choice A, 237. Choice B, 257. Choice C, 277. And then choice D, 297. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, let's move forward and look at the final answer. To solve these types of problems, my advice to you, always look for patterns. And the pattern here is that the next number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of n minus 1 in parentheses. And here is the number sequence. So let's look at the calculation of numbers in this particular series. The first number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 0, which is 1. Second number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 2 minus 1, which is an equivalent of 1 plus 4 and equals 5. Third number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 3 minus 1, which is 1 plus 4 in the power of 2, which is 16, which equals 17. Fourth number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 4 minus 1, which equals 1 plus 64 and equals 65. And the missing number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 5 minus 1, which equals 1 plus 256, which equals 257. So the correct choice here is choice B, 257. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to solve similar problems on the test.